a bit of an introduction to business management. So some key things that everyone should know is that this is a really good subject to get a jump on your ATAR. It definitely carried me and it was one of my high scoring subjects. So it is definitely one that I really love and really advocate and really believe that um, it does get you a bit of um, an advantage on your ATAR. The exam is 15 minutes reading time, two hours writing time. I know it's all the way to the end of the year, but it's just good to know um, what you're going to have, to, what sort of the expectations in terms of timing are. So yeah, you usually are given your reading time first, um, and then once your reading time is over, then you have two hours to sort of write your responses to all of the questions. This is the first year of the current study design. So there are some minor changes. Um, and so it's really, really important that you are using the right study design as your guide to really make sure that you're double checking that it has 2023 written on it. Um, Cause you don't wanna be using the old study design um, since you might be wasting your time doing practice questions um, that are unrelated to the current study design. There aren't significant changes. So there's just been some minor adjustments um, to this current one. But again, there is some content that has been taken out um, and sort of adjusted. So really keep that in mind when you are doing like past sort of exam papers, past SAC questions, and you're just sort of double checking that it is sort of the right, um, it's related to the study design and you're required to know that content. All right, um, if everyone could refresh your page, I think with the Slido questions, there was a little bit of an issue sort of linking um, that. So it would be great if you could refresh your page. And so all of the future polls that we do, you probably get, you would get the notification. So um, yeah, if you can just refresh the page for me um, and then we can, we'll continue on to the lecture. All right. Cool. So this is sort of a bit of a breakdown of the study design. So unit three has three area of studies worth 25%. Unit four also has, well, it has two areas of studies and that is also worth 25%. So, and then the exam ultimately is worth 50%. So unit three, unit four, um, 50%, they're both worth 50% together. Um, and then your exam is worth the 50% as well. But today we're going to be focusing on the first two areas of study um, within unit three. Um, and those are the business foundations and human resource management. All right, so why are your SACs important? Your study score will be between one and 50 and is based on your SAC scores and exam scores. So ultimately every SAC that you do has some, like it will definitely um, influence the grade that you get ultimately. And that can range from an E to an A plus. So the lowest you can get is an E, um, the highest you can get is A plus. And when you do get your marks back at the end of the year, um, you it's gonna give you, it won't give you the exact percentage you get, it's just gonna give you a grade um, ranging from E or to A plus. And again, same thing with the exam. And then you'll get a study score, which is, between one to 50. So the highest again is a 50 study score, um, which is very, very hard to get. Um, but, and then yeah, it sort of ranges between that. But an important note is doing poorly on your SACs makes it difficult to get a high study score. So that's really why consistency is really important. Um, and you're sort of giving every SAC your best go and you're trying to, um, you know, sort of do your best and study consistently because if you are studying consistently, that means by the end of the year, when it comes to your exam, you sort of, you're in a better sort of position to do well in the exam because um, you're not going to be sort of last minute scurrying, trying to like remember all of this content, rem like sort of learning the whole study design again. Um, so really where possible, try to be as consistent. All right, scaling. So the most important thing to know about scaling is that it's not important. So a lot of people think that, oh, since, you know, business management or other subjects that scale down, I shouldn't take them. In reality, like, it doesn't really matter because if you do well in a subject, you know, you do well in a subject. A 40, a 50 study score is a 50 study score. Um, so the further you are from the median score, the less you'll be scaled down. So there's some examples on the next slide. So if you get a raw 30, that would scale down to a 26. 38, a 36, and a 47 doesn't scale down. So the higher you get, the less um, your subject or your study score will be scaled down. 
Awesome. So if you did not complete units one and two, do not stress. Um, you don't really need anything from units one and two. Um, the study design is sort of built in a way which really like introduces you to the subject. Um, and so you're not really required to know any previous knowledge beforehand. If you are in year 11, um, if this is your only year 12 subject, really do try to make it your focus since ultimately it will contribute towards your ATAR. And if you're in year 12, good luck for the subject and also your other subjects as well. Um, and also a heads up, the further exam is always the same day as the exam. So you're always going to have sort of, sort of two exams in that one day. All right, understanding the study design. So this is an example of what the study design looks like. So each area of study has a page in study design that looks like this. And you can access the study design on the Vika website. So it's really important that I would suggest that you actually access it, but try and have a printout of it. So maybe, yeah, keep it in your Bizman book or it would, it would be good to have like a physical copy of the study design um, because I think it's really good to take to your classes um, and to even use when you're, you know, revising for your SACs. I like to use it as sort of like a checklist. Um, but yeah, this is really important. As I mentioned before, I like to use it as a checklist to ensure I was learning the correct material at school, but also at home. Um, and as I emphasized before, really, really imperative for this year since there is, since there is a new study design. So each area of study has one outcome task attached to it. Um, and these outcomes are the stacks. The key knowledge, it's the stuff that Vika wants you to know. And this is all of the key knowledge is accessible in your SACs and exam. Anything that is not in the key knowledge section or literally anything that's not in the study design, design um, as a whole cannot be assessed in your SAC or exam. But this is your ultimate guide. And so this is literally the checklist that you should be using um, when you are sort of revising for your um, assessments. And the key skills are also probably the most forgotten part of the study design. A lot of people just look at the key knowledge, um, but key skills is really important to also consider and look at because that indicates how Vika are allowed to ask questions. Um, so what type of questions they can ask on particular topics. And that sort of links into task words, um, which are also really important because the task word that you're presented with in a question, that's gonna determine how you would sort of structure your response um, to that question. And we'll go through task words a little bit later on, um, but another really key sort of tip that I would give um, you guys is knowing your task words because um, it's, it's it, yeah, it's a super important thing to do um, in terms of like sort of, um, yeah, um, how to sort of structure your responses. All right, so again, task words. So that's sort of knowing how to address task words, that's really important in answering questions. So these are some examples of task words. So if you are asked to compare these things, that's all about providing similarities and differences. Discuss, that's about your advantages and disadvantages on a particular concept. Describe, that's providing detail on its features and evaluate is advantages and disadvantages, but also a final opinion. So that's really, really important. A lot of people um, and a lot of people, yeah, a lot of students miss marks on evaluate questions because they forget to include that final opinion. So if you only include advantages and disadvantages, that's not enough to get full marks. It's really important to include that final opinion because um, that's a really key component of that task word. So yeah, evaluate questions usually tend to be around five marks. So that's two, advantage, two marks for advantages, two marks for disadvantages, and then sort of giving an extra mark for that final opinion. 